Hey, Dad. Hey, what? Did you know Anchor distributes our podcast to Spotify and Apple Podcasts free of charge? No way. Did you also know Anchor has everything you need to make a podcast, including tools and tips on how to grow your audience and fan base? Yes! Anchor is the best way to start and grow your podcast for absolutely free. Make sure to check out Anchor and download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Goodbye. Goodbye. Welcome back to another episode of The Roads Less Traveled. I am the delightful Declan Parker Rhodes, and that is the gorgeous... Grateful Gregory. Oh, okay. Yeah, flipping the script, going on his own, <laughs> doing his own thing. Um, before we jump into today's main topic, I feel like we have not <laughs> met in a really long time, <laughs> which happens. It's okay. Life, life gets in the way. We're both very busy people doing our own thing um sometimes it's hard to find time for us together just to sit down and record but either way i'm glad we're doing it right now um how you been what what have you been up to not much just uh living the dream i guess Mm -hmm. (laughs) well what's the dream i guess for me it's doctor's appointments (laughs) lab work uh i don't know it's that's the new norm for me it's Going to doctor's appointments, going to chemo appointments, going to checkup appointments. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, for our listeners who well, we haven't talked to in a while, um, people who listen to the podcast, you recently had a procedure done. Um, you yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's been two weeks to tomorrow. Uh I had a colostomy bag uh, because uh, to help me with my uh, bathroom issues yeah. uh, from the, when I got radiation back in 2016 for chemo. Well, I was doing chemo and then they did radiation to try to uh, kill the uh, cancer that was in the, lymph, the pelvic lymph nodes. And even though it was pinpoint radiation, it still hit other organs and tissue in my pelvis, which don't like radiation. And then over time, just it, it didn't get worse with uh, going to the bathroom. So it was uh, the option was presented that it, it might be time to look at into uh, other means. And one of those other means were a colostomy bag. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would imagine that not a whole lot of people's pelvises enjoy radiation. Um, not necessarily the first thing people want to do on the holiday season. Um Beside the point, uh, the operation went successfully. Yeah, it was very yes, successful. It was very successful. Um, shout out to the doctors and surgeons who yes. made that happen. Um, has it been helping you, you think? or Well, well or, I mean, it's it, still, it has, still very it's, early. To, well, it has, but it seems like I'm still going to the bathroom a lot because now I'm dealing with, I think, a bad UTI. Uh, but we didn't took a couple of samples, and I'm waiting to hear back on, a, on the last... I, uh, sample i submitted yesterday uh through my oncologist's office to see what's going on with because uh, just i seem like i'm back in the bathroom only now for urinating so it's yeah it's like well then somebody forgot to tell the urethra that hey we fixed this and he's not supposed to be going to the bathroom that much anymore so yeah so but but the other part the colostomy it it, it, it was a success and it, it it's a 180 i'm not having as issues that i had with it yeah. Uh, two weeks ago. Yeah. So. Um, well, that's good. That's great. Uh, ignore that slight <laughs> um, alarm. That was Greg's phone. It's okay. Everything's good. Um, 
Well, that's good. I'm glad. I'm glad the operation went well, and um, you're. It's a new, a new process, new system. You're getting used to. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. What I speaking of going to the bathroom. I don't know if this just rem, randomly reminded me. Do you remember how old was I? I probably had to be like. I feel like ten years old, and I it was Christmas. And I had just gotten a DS for for Christmas. And I remember that night I played it like all night long in, into December 26th. And I remember you coming into the bathroom. I was like literally just on the toilet sitting and playing my DS. <laughs> I, I loved that thing so much. That's good. Uh, yeah, that was... Quite a young and innocent time. <laughs> time to be alive, for sure. Um, well, I think we can go ahead and step into our main topic of today. When we last left off, um, which I believe, actually, by the time we, we release this, I think this is on my, my fault, my bad. I think I might have released two of the episodes out of order. Or there is still a one episode that we need to release that the public has not heard yet. By the time this releases, what you're listening to right now, it'll be the most current thing. Um, but I believe last time we met, we talked about your nannying job. Yes. And kind of how that that planted seeds and ideas in your head of a potential life you could have had in um, mass... Massachusetts, no, Con- Connecticut. Connecticut, Connecticut. Um, yeah, that so that that was kind of our main topic of last last session of you being introduced this, to this idea of having this amount of money or this amount of I don't know social status in a close knit community. I mean, run, running into. Uh, David, David Letterman. Letterman. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now moving forward, post nanny job, um, what did what did life look like for you? Uh, if you if you're able to take us back. Uh, well, just um, came home after uh, uh, the Thompsons had, uh, I guess you could say, downsized because they moved from their ten thousand square foot estate to like a 5,000 square foot house and uh, did some other things. Long story short, they wasn't going to need a full-time nanny because the kids was getting older and uh, 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 just weren't going to need a full-time nanny. So now I had the option to stay on to uh, finish school up down there or I could come home, come back home, and I I didn't want to waste anyone's time and money so I came back home it was it was best but they kept in touch they mm. they kept in touch um but yeah so I came back to Missouri in 93 so yeah yep. so you came back to St. Louis specifically no actually I came back to Springfield okay yeah I didn't um, even go to St. You, Louis were you living with someone at this point or just by yourself or? by myself mm. yeah so you came back to Springfield, you, uh, what what time of year would you say this would have been? Uh, it was the spring. Spring, okay. Spring. So you had nannied for a full year? Because uh, uh, it originally had just started as that summer. Correct. Um, and so by, by the next spring, you were, it had come home? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So almost a full year. Yeah. Um, so you come back to Springfield, having seen all this, almost like a culture shock in terms of getting out of, you know, obviously you got out of St. Louis coming to Springfield, but getting out of your home state, getting yeah. out, getting onto one of the coasts, <laughs> also one of the oldest coasts in yeah. terms of the United States, the birth of our nation and home, the, the homes of the founding fathers in the first 13 colonies. Um yeah, what was that? Do you remember anything, what that was like in terms of coming home and, and kind of having to return to some sort of normalcy? Uh, yeah, it was. 
initially it was that, oh, see, I knew I'd be back. I knew this was all a dream. That was one. One was nobody in the world is going to ever believe what I experienced. I'm glad I got pictures to show some of the stuff, but then the, a lot of the stuff is just, you know, uh, my my word, me telling them the part of a story. Yeah. Uh, because I'm like, it's, it's not, they never discouraged me from taking pictures or anything, but the kids really, John and Julia prepped me like, you know, that, that's not cool or that's not, that's not something we do because they're just, they're just friends of ours or they just people we know. So we're not going to take a picture with them every time we're with them. So, yeah. but, but I got some pictures, but, uh, no, mostly it would be, uh, just my experiences and telling people what I experienced up there. Mm. So, but anyway, but coming back to Springfield, it was, it was not a, not really a culture shock. It was just like, Hmm, well, I'm back to, I'm back to what I know that is, as you say, normal. Uh, and, uh, did I miss Connecticut? I I miss I miss what Connecticut what could have been. Yeah, that made sense. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and, and I miss the family. I miss the Thompsons. Uh, and, and like I said, they kept in touch. But it's not like being being there. Uh, and I didn't miss them because of their fame or notoriety or money. I miss them because of their genuine care and love. Something yeah. that was lacking in my life from from uh, parent or adults in my life. Yeah. Not all adults, but the the closer ones to me. Yeah. Yeah. In between coming back to Springfield post your nanny job to now, is there any ever was there ever any part or has there ever been any part of you that regrets not staying? No, actually, no. I no. Um, no, because I look back. I look back at it now. From uh, as you, as we get older, we get more mature. We get more wiser. Are we supposed to? And so, at fifty-one, I look back at it as if Connecticut was great and wonderful. But had I stayed there. That's all. Yeah. Would I have known, continue to know grateful and wonderfulness? Yeah. Would there have been some some uh, valleys? Possibly so, just because of who we are. We don't. I mean, the old saying, you can take the boy out of the country, but you can't take the country out of boy. So, uh, yeah, I, there would have been some valleys, some low times. Uh, but Connecticut would have been safe because it was safe. There was there was not not the same things that I experienced or were subjected to from St. Louis or even in Springfield. Yeah. But we, we can't live in a bubble. So, mm -hmm. so to, to look back and say, did I regret, uh, coming home? No, cause I, I needed to still live life and I need to experience life. And, uh, uh, so, so no, I, no regrets, no regrets. Yeah. So when you had come back, was your immediate plan to try and finish school or what was so, so you came back yeah. and in the spring, did you get in a, get a job immediately um, to help just get right. up money? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Cause uh, I wasn't going to, uh, I was going to miss the spring semester because uh, of school at Missouri state. So I just going to work, find an apartment work and then start with summer school. Mm. Uh, pick up a couple of uh, classes during summer school, uh, summer of 93. So, and then continue on because at this point, the Thompsons was paying for it. So. Yeah. Okay. So you go back to summer school. Do you remember what classes you had picked up or were you just trying to finish general education courses again now? Uh, yeah, I, I Since had an English class or a history, uh, world history or something like that. And, I forgot. Oh, man, I forgot. Shame on me. The other class, but uh, yeah, world history class. I think it was something like world history, and maybe anatomy class. I think I I don't know. I don't remember. But it's the class is where I met my would be uh, roommate from that point on, and uh, best friend, best man in my wedding. So. Yeah. Uh, James? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, I, so you had already known James though before, or who was yeah. the who was your original roommate that you had had? Uh, before I left for Connecticut. Yeah. Oh, uh, John Beckett. John. Okay. Yeah. A lot of J names. <laughs> <laughs> this is why it's hard to keep track in my brain. Okay. James is the one that I know I've met a couple yeah. times. Um, so you met him in those classes. Yes. I met James in uh, the history and, class. Do you remember what he was majoring in? He's majoring in therapeutic recreation, mm. TR, which just happened to be what uh, I was been been majoring in yeah so that yeah so um and so do you remember just being in class with him you kind of build a rapport or working on projects and whatnot or was it just kind of a natural forming of a friendship or how how did that kind of take place um uh well just a natural forming uh friendship you know we be in class uh and We'd be talking, and I uh, just one thing led to another. But I, I, I remember being excited uh, when, when we found out that we were uh, both uh, majoring in the same thing, uh, and that we he was he was transitioning from Mizzou to uh, Springfield, and I was uh, basically had transitioned from Warrensburg to Springfield. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was just like, well, what are the chances? And uh, he lived in a house on Grand with uh, two other guys from his hometown, Mountain Grove, Missouri. And they had another available room. It was a house uh, that's been renovated and had six bedrooms and three bathrooms. And uh, he asked me, uh, do I need a place to stay? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, uh, well, you want to come over and check this out? And See if this is something you want to do, and if so, we can make it happen. If not, it's, it's not. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you finished the summer classes. Um, and this is trying to get back on, quote unquote, schedule oh, yeah. to graduate, whatever that means. Um, so you return to MS or SMS in the fall. Correct. That fall. Well, right. Right. Or the summer, you could say, the summer school. But yeah, yeah, really, yeah, I returned to them fall of 93. Fall of 93. And in terms of your mental health and well-being, how would you say that that was looking at this point, post-Connecticut? Okay. It was was doing okay. It was uh, sheltering or shielding myself from uh, pre-Connecticut. Because, I, I mean, all those things and stuff from upbringing and being raised in that environment. When I left the house at 18 to go to Warrensburg to go off to college, uh, I didn't just leave those things there. Now, did I think I did? Yeah, I, I honestly naively thought I left that garbage at 4557 Newberry Terrace in St. Louis, Missouri. I seriously, looking back, and if we're being honest, brutally honest, at 51, I seriously thought when I left at 18 – left home to go to college to Warrensburg, uh, that I left all the mess, the gunk, the trash, the horrible stuff, the thoughts and experiences that I had experienced in St. Louis. I thought I left them there, but we don't because they're always here and uh, you'll eventually have to deal with them. And so, yes, yeah, but I, I, I naively thought I left them there. Why did they have to come back after Connecticut I, I don't know. That just that didn't make sense to me because so because I went from uh, 1989 graduating high school, uh, leaving the fall of 1989. Uh, like I said, leaving all that gunk and monk and trash back in St. Louis, uh, and then went on with my life to start my life or career or whatever. And then what three four years later and. In 93, 94, all that stuff to come to the surface after such a wonderful and blessed experience that I had in Connecticut. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, it is unfortunate. Um, I guess, yeah, how the human brain works in terms of holding on to trauma that, you know, we think we can physically leave. 
but it is always carried with us mm-hmm. and within the prison of our minds. Yes. Um, yeah, I guess uh, this is around the time. So th- this is obviously your early 20s, which is what I'm in right now, which right. is wild to think about. Yeah. Just in terms of like you having almost sort of like. Not to sound so literal, but like uh, an, an ego death in terms of realizing that which you obviously going to Connecticut helped with this realizing that, you know, other people had lived these whole other lives and whole other side of the life that you, you didn't grow up in. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so, so that, so that's where your mental state is at. Um, as of fall of 93, do you, do you remember, were, were you still planning on trying to graduate? Because you would still have been a credits-wise sophomore at this Correct. point. Very good. Very good. You were on top of it. Yeah. What was I still? Yeah, I was still uh, planning on, anticipating, graduating. But was was I mentally pursuing it as I should have been now, Declan, again, if we're being truthfully honest, because again, I just, I, it was just like, whoa, what happened? Yeah. What, what happened? Yeah. I feel like also uh, as someone who's in their early twenties, has there ever, I mean, I'm sure this has come up just while you were that age, the, this feeling of, I feel like a lot of people my age have, have this innate sense that they can be invincible or and that's any young person. Correct. <laughs> they can feel invincible or untouchable or, you know, like having so much potential in terms of years of life ahead of you. Was there ever a point where like, I don't know, you just, you didn't know what you were doing or you felt aimless or you, you just wanted to pack it all up, start new somewhere in a podunk, podunk right. town. I don't know. Yeah. What, what, what? Did... Uh, yeah. Uh, especially cause I mean, James and I were now living together and uh, we're getting along, getting along together, and his other two friends from Mount Grove, uh, Jim Ed and Ron, and they were great guys, great guys. And uh, Ron's dad is who owned his house and renovated it and made it into a rental house. But anyway, we all got along. I mean, just great again. So the experiences were all was positive, uh, but. James is a little more serious about, you know, because he 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 knows for a fact where he at, he's at with his credits and everything and how soon he's going to be graduating, which he would be graduating in about two years to spring of 95. Yeah. And so. Uh, but my heart just wasn't in it. Uh, my heart and head wasn't just in it. And and, and and I don't know. Well, I do know why, because I'm, I made that uh, fateful call and visit back to St. Louis as soon as I got back from Connecticut Mm -hmm. because I was still on that cloud nine. Yeah. Uh, And, but nothing had changed with them. I mean, absolutely nothing had changed with home. So, so I, I I say I made that fateful trip and call back there when I got from Connecticut and that's, that, Probably wasn't. You know, I ain't no probably to it. Looking back now, it, that was not the best thing for my psychic at, at that time. Mm-hmm. Even though I was coming off a totally awesome, blessed, and high ex- experience, it was mentally I was not ready to uh, deal with uh, home life yeah, back in St. Louis to reopen that Dude, wound. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, w- I I feel like maybe we've touched on this before in terms of you know you 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 being the youngest. Um, did did you ever feel like your older siblings? I don't know. Like looked at you in terms of oh he he got out of here he he he's starting to make something of himself in terms of having his own money his own career his own thoughts feelings. Um, what was that? Did you have an inkling that that was ever there in any of your older siblings? No, absolutely no. Absolutely no. No, it was, it was, you think you're better than us now. 
Mm. You think you're better than us, but you 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 were on you were on the same tree that we were on. You 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 broke off from the same tree that we broke off from in yeah. life. You know better than us. You think you are because you didn't you didn't been here. You didn't been there. You didn't done this. You didn't met these people. You know these people. You know that person. But you're no better than us. And you come back to flaunt that in our face, which I never did. Uh, never once. Uh, but that was the attitude. And they were like, we're not going to let you flaunt it. Yeah. We're going to remind you who you are and where you're from. <laughs> Do you Misery like- loves company. Yes. Yeah. It, n- not only in terms of your own family. Do you think that that's a, a prevalent thing in the world of people of color oh absolutely oh good night Declan Rhodes you hit the nail on the head absolutely that's that's my feeling that's my feeling that's my belief and I'll take it to the grave with me but absolutely yeah and uh, how much do you think obviously not even going into like years of oppression from people making decisions in government or whatever police whatever right. um you know constantly knocking quote unquote the black man down to be lower than less than the opposite of that the, the white man being the the top of society the societal ladder like how how do you think that that alone affects black people's psyche well i think um uh, to those that have a a, a marginal or weak psyche uh you're already you're already being down so you you're like I, I can never get out of here I can never do do better than this I mean it, the cards are stacked against me and so to the weak psyche not all not all weak psyches uh to me, it's just, it's, just, it's, it's, it's a done deal. Mm-hmm. Those who have a, a marginal to a little stronger uh, psychic uh, or belief or faith somewhere, they don't succumb to that. They don't, yeah, that's, that's painted on the wall every day they wake up that, as you said, keep the black man down. Uh, but they look at it and, they go on about their way and they got their they got their goals and their priorities set and they know that 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 stereotype or that 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 real we're going to keep him down is it's real it's not it's not son of your imagination of a black person's imagination so but but the person with a marginal to stronger psyche like I'm going to prove them wrong I'm going to prove them wrong. Yeah. So, but but does it does it has an effect on our society, our black society? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I I believe so. Yeah. So you had called back and found out your family was practically in the same shape that you had left them in. Um, obviously, probably not necess- pro- Probably like a little bit feeling of shock, but but a bigger feeling of not shock or not surprise i would say is probably what you're feeling yes yeah yeah um so when did you did you make that call in the fall of 93 or spring of 94 uh now the fall of 93 okay when you yeah. so when you had yeah. near around after you had gotten back yeah so after making the call do you remember how much longer it had passed before you made any other kind of contact with your family or if they had oh, reached, reached, uh, out, reached back out to you? It, before the call, it, it, it had been probably eight months since I had uh, called home and checked on mom and checked to see how everybody was doing. Walter, Rita, Betty, Carolyn, Dale, my siblings, and then my nieces and nephews, see how they were doing and what they were up to. It, it had been probably about six, six to eight months. Yeah. Yeah being an uncle to your nieces and nephews, was it, I mean, obviously you can only do so much as right. an uncle, someone who's not necessarily seeing them all day. Well, did you ever think about wanting to give them that sense of you can do anything like you can get out of here. You can, 
trying to pass that torch to them. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially the ones who had that little spark uh, in their step or in their that spark in their eye that, hey, you know, uh, there's something to this what, what Gregory's experiencing and has experienced. And, and even before Connecticut, what Gregory experienced, he, he left for his college, you know, when he graduated high school and, and look what he has done so far, you know. So, yeah, I, I definitely want to pass that on. And, and that definitely was their, that spark in, in, in one or two of their eyes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, my uh, niece, Stacy, uh, my, uh, she's the baby, well, my sister Betty, which is the baby girl. I'm the youngest of the six, uh, but she's the youngest girl of the three, uh, and it's her daughter, her baby girl daughter, and uh, she is just fire broom set, set, set on her path and uh, her conviction and to make Sinai herself come hell or high water, and she's, and she's doing it, uh, she is. She's doing it. She'll she'll graduate next uh spring with uh her college degree. Hmm. Yeah, and as a single mother of three, she does she's doing this. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Stacy. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, we're now in spring of ninety four, still doing classes. Yep. Um what what is life looking like for you? Still kind of feeling aimless, not your heart's not really set into TRing. Um, what what are you what are you thinking? Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean, I, I'm just floating out there. Just I'm. I mean, I'm not trying to make an excuse or. I just I was mentally floating out there. It was just you know. I know what. Well, do I know what I need to do? Do I know what I. Do I know what I need to do? I know what I should do. Do I, do I, what do, do I want to do? It was, and, and so I was just floating out there. Uh, seemed like with no life jacket. Yeah. And part of me that need, uh, know what I need to do was like, come on, Gregory, you, you, you got on this horse a few years back when you, when you, Really, more than a few years back, you got on this horse when you graduated eighth grade and you went to Lindbergh, that all white school in freshman year and how focused you were. You know, you got on that horse then and you've been on it since then. And, OK, you ran into uh, some difficult times, some valleys, but you stayed on that horse and you, you stayed true to that horse that, hey, this is the path. This is the objective. This is the goal. Go get it. And then, yeah, you experienced Connecticut, and that was like, whew. Uh, even for uh, being on that horse and being focused, that was that that was that was a surprise in in a, in a in a works. But you know what you need to do, so you need to do it. But so I I had a mental fight with that, what I know I needed to do versus what I should do or what I want to do, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and that struggle, that struggle, it was not something that's going, was going to go away. Yeah. It was, it was, it, it, it was not, it just was not, I tell you. And, and it, and it didn't, it, it, uh, uh, I needed to, now I know, uh, and at then I, I, I kind of knew, but, didn't want to go there, but I, I needed to talk to somebody, get those feelings out and, and get them, I don't know, categorized or arranged. You know, why am I, why am I dealing with this? Why is this surfacing when I just had this awesome experience? Uh, and I got, you know, a year, I, I got a couple of years, maybe three to graduate from college, my college degree. And that, that's the, that's the, that's the goal. And so why are you, why are these, all these other things out there? Why are you entertaining them or giving them time in your brain to foster, to yeah. fester? So, yeah. So yeah, it, it, it was, it was did a it feel like, hell. did it feel like a weakness? What? Just these thoughts coming back. And oh, absolutely. Definitely. 
and un- unfortunately it's you know i just keep thinking about this young 20 something gregory Rhodes in terms of not having like like i think about social media and the way the internet has evolved now in terms of being able to speak to people halfway across the world from you or find groups of people who are like-minded and have similar experiences to you like that that is is a very recent thing that has become available to human beings we have not been able to communicate and talk with each other correct from such long distances honestly we besides the technological advancement of human beings we never have really meant to know as many people as we do now or have the com- kind of connections or communication we have with those people. Do you think that something like that, like coming earlier could have helped you find like your niche or your group or, cause I think I'm thinking about like, n- not only in terms of like theater and performing, just in terms of, knowing artistic people creative people creative Mm, minds people who can create something from nothing that has been such an important part of social media and the internet for me in terms of finding people who i know have gone through things that i have gone through or have experienced things that i have experienced do you think like something like that would have helped you or you just didn't yeah like would something like that have helped you oh absolutely just being able to talk to people yeah also i feel like this idea of like Thank, thank God that mental health is more talked about now. Still definitely not in the point where it should be. But I feel like also as a man, it's not necessarily – It's you're still living in a time period where, like, it's not um, the first thing to jump at talking about your feelings or talking about how you're feeling inside your head with someone. Right. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, that would that would have been had I had that at my disposal, so to speak. Uh, yeah, it, it's. I guess I could say who knows, but yeah, I, I think it would have been been beneficial because because when I did uh, pursue talking to someone like counselor at school at Missouri State, and uh, the counselor I got hooked up with our scientist, she was very good, uh, and she suggested the group sitting. And you have to be very careful with with when you're in that state of mind or you're dealing with issues like this. You have to be very careful how and who and why you share that with, if that makes sense. Yes. And and for me, it wasn't a group sitting. I needed a one on one. Because all I found, and this this was the first group, the first time I ever did this, but the, the group's setting, all I found was, again, misery loves company. Everybody had a shitty life coming up. And some bad things happened to people. Uh, so, yeah, looking on the spectrum, I didn't experience some of the worst things that some, that some of these other people experienced that was in group therapy sharing with me. But I wasn't, my case wasn't weak compared to others if that makes yeah. sense but again but that was just not the place or uh or mode that i needed to be in uh and so i, I just say that for what it's worth because I, I found i i found that to be it was just again misery loves company it was just negativeness and it's like where, where in the hell do i get off the negative train at you know where, where do I get off the? Where do I get on the positive train that life is going to be better? It's it's going to it's going to be some more uh, Connecticut uh, rosy, bright, shiny days. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, but that group sitting wasn't wasn't that. <laughs> yeah, I yes. This is um the roads less traveled official announcement to stay away from trauma dumping people. <laughs> On purpose, because that is unfortunately a very, the very popular thing, especially my generation in terms of having (laughs) one of the downfalls of social media and the internet and the growing technological advancement we've witnessed and grown up with is the, the field or the need to feel to overshare or, or 
trauma dump everything to everyone at all times. Yes, sir. Which is not very healthy. No, sir. Which cannot not be healthy at all. So I'm also, I'm, I feel like this is begging a lot of questions. Also coming up, looking back now, now that you realized you had started wanting to talk to someone and this was someone in, this is when you're in your 20s. Correct. Well past teenage years. Yes, sir. Well past adolescence. And yes, sir. All that development. You're, you're not fully developed until your brain, at least until 25. Um, but you've kind of already moved past this development stage. Do you think having... I feel like so many people are like so turned off by the idea of like children talking to therapists or being required to talk to therapist because that is something that I know that if when I have children someday, like I, I want them, I want that to be implemented in their upbringing, not only just to like talk about their problems or to bring light to, because sometimes kids don't even know what the fuck is wrong mm-hmm. unless they talk about it. Um, I just feel like there's this whole idea of like talking to someone else about your problems or how your mind is working or how it's not working is looked at as weak yeah. or, or almost feminine in a sense, which is completely ludicrous, <laughs> which right. is completely batshit crazy to think that talking about your feelings or what's going on in your own prison of your mind is, is weak or not looked at as strong. Um, no, do you think talking to a therapist as a child would have um, helped you come to light with or terms with some of this? Oh, absolutely. Faster? Yes. Yes. At, uh, heads, hands down. Absolutely. At 51 looking back now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's yeah. Yeah. Yep. Was there ever a point raising us that you had thought about that or had wanted for you guys to which is not not like necessarily saying anything by this just in terms of like i think literally even if it's just once a year a child talking to a therapist to have a mental checkup i think personally is a a good idea um yeah what are your thoughts on that uh well first i'll answer your first one did i think about that for you guys no, because you guys weren't experiencing anything that I experienced growing up. You guys, and, 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 you know, maybe that was selfish on my part. Maybe that was me being too cocky on my part. But you guys, you just didn't, you didn't experience the life I experienced. Uh, and so I didn't think of anything that you guys would like need to go talk to someone about or that, man, it's going to come back and haunt them. We, we need to get them in to see somebody because there was nothing that happened. You guys weren't abused uh, physically, mentally, emotionally, sexually, spiritually, you got, you guys weren't, you weren't experienced any of that. Uh, again, cause I kept you back from St. Louis and you, you knew little to nothing about my upbringing and my family. Mm-hmm. So that was my way of protecting you guys. Right, wrong, or indifferent. When you told me that a, a few episodes back that, you know, I, I kept you, kept you guys away from not to experience that your the other half of your culture and what she was right on that. I, I should not have done that. Uh, but no. So at the time, no, I didn't think, I didn't think anything, anything about you guys needing counseling today. You look back on, I like how you said it. Absolutely. At, at least once a year, a kid go in and talk to a, a therapist or a doctor, uh, just a, a mental dump. I, I think that is very healthy. That's that's you get a yearly checkup. You suppose I mean they big on it, especially when you were a kid pre kindergarten. You got to have a, a wellness check every year and make sure you got your yeah. immunizations. A mental check up is 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 what this world needs. Yeah. So that that's so I'm learning as should be. Mm. Tables turn. I'm learning from you. Yeah. I'm learning from the. Uh, Wait, it's just it's just so funny too to think about. I think retrospectively in terms of for so long human beings have like done this idea of like a physical checkup oh absolutely can you stretch this far can you run for this exactly. long yes sir can yep. you do anything fi- blink this many times i don't know yep. uh, just like we we've checked all these boxes in terms of what human beings can physically do and i i don't 
it's kind of mind blowing to think that again, I mean, I, with the ever rapid growing of the internet, it, it, it does make sense in terms of people being more knowledgeable and more, more people being knowledgeable about how the human brain works and how it can hold on to things and process experience experiences and how that can shape you into your adult years. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, this is very interesting. Very, very fascinating. Mm -hmm. Not to get too off tangent, um, back to main, the main course. So you, you realized you wanted to start one-on-one -on -one therapy spring of 94. What, what did, did you like have any idea of who to talk to or like what, how to go about that or what? Uh, well, uh, no, not really. But uh, at this time, I was uh, starting to get involved with the Wesley Foundation there on campus. And that's what I'm that's when I met Treva Hall. Uh, may she rest in peace. Uh, but she she was like she was a mentor to me uh, and she got me in to talk to somebody in the counseling office. Um, and the counselor's name was Mimi and she, and she was good. But again, like I said, she uh, suggested or told me or scheduled me for group group therapy. And I, I knew the first damn day that, whoa, this is not where I need to be. But I, I, so to speak, sadly, Declan Parker played the game and stayed in there. And that, that, that led to, to even darker days. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause what it did is, it, it brought all that stuff, that muck and gunk up that I dealt with in St. Louis growing up in the environment that I grew up in, growing up in the house that I grew up in with the people I grew up in. It All that stuff that I I, I, I had stored away in, in a nice, quiet-kept box over the years, uh, it came out in that group sitting and it, and it was just like it came out, but it was no way to contain it or no way to, okay, how do you deal with this issue? When do you deal with this issue? How do you feel about that issue now yeah. that you're 18 or whatever? And that, that wasn't happening fast enough. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gigging on a, on a counseling experience, but it just was not having happening fast enough. Uh, and, and I just went down a dark rabbit hole mm. with all that gunk following me. Yeah. So about how long did you do this group thing for? Uh, about two months. And that was group every other week. About two months. Yes. Uh, February, March, because April is when the the downhill spiral rabbit hole would happen. Yeah. Yeah. I also imagine it's and this is not to put push or turn anyway anyone away from group therapy right um but the only other thing i could like draw a line to it relating to me not that i've done this but in my head like how i could relate it to something would be almost like a an aa group yes like yeah. a group of people coming together to talk about their experiences how it how it has shaped them and how they want to move past them that's exactly what um I mean. now with that said i think that could definitely work for some people and that could definitely help and improve some people for other people though this it, again it's almost like yeah like comparing trauma right which yeah. you really can't do you can't really compare your trauma to someone else's because right. you both you both only have one experience of that it's mm -hmm. your own yep. you yourself and you um so yeah, I, I understand where where the it's not where it wasn't really clicking for you or working for you. I think mm -hmm. that's why the therapy I have done one on one has been much more beneficial than I've never really done like a group setting of trauma right. bonding. I mean, <laughs> I take that back. I guess I have done <laughs> a group setting of trauma bonding in terms of like telling a group of friends, people I trust right. um, my about my life or things that have shaped me um but that is to each their own i digress um so what what did this dark dark rabbit hole look like for you uh well when i was doing this then coming from 
the group setting that I got from the group counseling setting I got, oh, you're a child of an alcoholic, current alcoholic. Well, you need to be in Al-Anon, another group for Al-Anon was, I, I don't even know if it exists today, but it's uh, Children of Alcoholics or Drug yeah. Al-Anon. Yeah. And so I joined that outside of uh, school sitting that group. So I was doing that too. And so just all this gunk, like I said, it was just coming to the surface, just building to the surface. And I just didn't feel like uh, I had guidance or direction on like, uh, okay, well, we need to we need to stuff this one back down, stuff that one back down. Let's address that one. And then we'll come back and look at that one. And, and then we'll come back. I, I don't know how it, it's supposed to be, but just it all came up. And uh, there was no dealing with it. Well, in a sense that, constructive like okay what do i do with these feelings what do i do with these emotions what do i do with this that happened to me you know the yeah. physicals what, what do i do with that how do i deal with that and it it just like i said in a group sitting it wasn't getting answered fast enough so i just continued to now that's my focus now so what about school dude you got you got to go to school you got to go to college you got to go to your classes slowly and slowly that was that was not happening because I, I I was dealing with the muck and the guck. Yeah. And that dark rabbit hole, man, that dark rabbit hole took me to a point where it's like, you know, Connecticut can't even get me out of that. Yeah. And so you go down that dark rabbit hole, man. Um, and for me, it wasn't a good dark rabbit hole because uh, um, it was just – uh, the conclusion was all this stuff, this muck and guck and whatever uh, that's that come out. There is there's only one common denominator: me. Yeah. So if I remove myself from it, don't have to think about it anymore. Don't have to deal with it. Don't have to try to stuff it back down or whatever. Yeah. So. And this might be getting retouching into something we've I know yeah. we've talked about. Yep. You checked yourself in. Yeah. Yes. Um, and that was for how long? Do you remember? The first stint was for a week. Because uh, I, I got in the hospital and we they did their evaluation, pre-evaluation. And uh, guess what? I was back in group therapy in the hospital. Now, I had also one-on-one therapy either. Easily, I mean, uh, two. I had uh, one-on-one therapy, yeah. uh, but still had the group therapy. And it's just, it was, man, it, it it was it was intense. To that, again, you know, seven, eight other people pulling all their monkey and gunk out of the mop bucket of what happened to them, what they what they what they're dealing with, and and. Nobody was saying, minus the counselor, nobody was saying, okay, Bobby, you were sexually abused, so this is what you need to do, or this is what you should do. Uh, Mary, you were sexually abused and uh, physically abused. This what you, it, that, that wasn't coming out of the, just everybody was unloading. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, and again, we think we think terms of early '90s. Mm-hmm. Now being in the 2020s, um, the, just the past few decades, in terms of not only the mental health conversation being started, but being prevalent, more prevalent than it was 20, 30 years ago. Um, so, not necessarily all this. The, the research just isn't there in terms of how best to talk to people, treat people with past trauma and experience. Um, also at this point, had they talked to you about being medicated or taking medication? Not this first, not that first, that, that first week I went in. Nope. Okay. So between the first week you going in, coming out, do you know how much longer went before you went back? It was Probably a couple of weeks, no more than a couple of weeks, because Mimi, my counselor at Missouri State, my one on one counselor, she 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 from our one on one sessions uh, hearing me talk. She knew that I was I was 
about uh, cute that I need to go back in and this time Gregory don't play the game and the, the game was d- say what you need to say do what you need to do uh, to get out as soon as yeah. you can this time you really need to deal with some issues yeah and and that's what happened it was less less is is about two weeks or less that from the first initial hospitalization because that's what it was that I had uh, that I went in and I, I would be in there for a month then yeah um, so you go in for a month and this is probably like May, June now. Uh, we're in May, May, we're, we're the end of April actually. Okay. The end of April. Cause I never forget. I went in in April and came out on, uh, June 13th or 14th when OJ, uh, they were chasing OJ on TV. Mm. That's when I got out of hospital. You know, in 94. Mm. Yeah. So how did this second time in longer stint um how did how did it look and what did the conversation look like in terms of them talking to you about medicine uh well initially they they looked over my uh oh you was in here a couple weeks ago for for about a week four four or five days and yep uh why'd you get out so fast oh well because you you played the game You, you know what to say in group you know what to say on one on one. You know what to say in your activity groups, and you did the projects. You did the sharing. You did the uh, uh, all that, and so you got out. and And so, why are you back? You know, because I didn't deal with anything really. So it was like, well, we're going we're going to take some time. We're we're going to take some time. Yeah. Uh, and my first one-on-one with my doctor uh, at that time, uh, medication was uh, brought into the picture. Because I wasn't sleeping, which is very bad for mentally. Yeah. I mean, even now, if when you're not asleep, your body doesn't mentally and physically repair itself. And I don't care if you're Tom Brady or if you're Gregory Rhodes, if you don't get to sleep... Uh, and physical rest that your body demands, uh, you will run in trouble. You will run into trouble. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that can look either way, depending on the person, yeah. what, what they have. And so, so were they t- thinking about giving you some kind of sleep medication? Yeah, yeah. that was the very first uh, thing they did was sleep. Uh, and they gave me uh, trazodone. Mm-hmm. I, I agreed to take and... Uh, get to sleep and then they uh well while i was in there uh i had given um my doctor there uh permission to uh talk to my counselor back at missouri state mimi yeah and at, she was having a meditation tape made for me to go to sleep to hmm. and it was pretty awesome i still got it but, yeah so uh, still in that first week, uh, it was uh, looked into. Okay, now we we're, we're getting your sleep. We're we're taking care of you sleep wise. We need to take care. Of, we need to get your mood your mood balanced because right now you 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 are bing bing bing. You are you are up and down, uh-huh. and we need to get your mood stabilized uh, so we can deal with these issues. So it was it was more like get me physically in shape. To deal with the mental stuff, mm-hmm. and that, that might—that's a lot of people. Well, not today in 2021, like you say, sound crazy. But back then, that sounded crazy to a lot of people. But it 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 makes sense. And yeah, in layman's terms, terms in terms yeah. of just simply thinking, you're yeah, I I I, I see the 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 connections. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, so. Um, was like we gotta get your we, we gotta get your mood stabilized. You 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 can't be like this because you you you'll do what you you did before. Uh, you, you you can't one you can't deal with your issues that that come out because you're you're all over the map. Yeah. Uh, and two, if we don't get you at an even kill, you're gonna continue to do this to you 
quite possibly hurt yourself or hurt somebody. Yeah. And so, so that was the next big topic. And that took, that took a couple of weeks on uh, getting the medicines, getting the right medicine and not only getting the right medicine, then get it adjusted to the, get the level that I needed the the strength or, or lack of strength. Yeah. And so once we got that done, we started on, okay, let's peel back to these wounds and let's look at them. Yeah. At this point, have they had like officially diagnosed you with anything? Uh, no, not really, because the the doctor wanted to be very careful with diagnosing me with with something and me going back to school. Yeah. And at this point, did you have any other friends besides people who were in the hospital that you were seeing on a regular basis? Who- James, James, and his uh, retriever would come see me and talk to me uh, daily. Uh, and like I said, Mimi would at least once a week uh, call to check on me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're trying out these combinations of medicines. Um, how does this how does this this kind of chapter end in terms of coming in the second time for evaluation? How, how does this how does this summer look? Summer of ninety four look right. Uh, well, I definitely. They, they, I mean, uh, obviously, they they were definitely right that I needed sleep, uh, so the trazodone gave for it, and my 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 mood needed to be. Uh, I needed help with it because because the mood I came in on, even though I was able to that first that first time in play the games. Uh, jump through the hoops and uh I was able to do that. I still was a very low mood. I was I mean I was just somber. Yeah. It was just uh and so we needed to we needed help with getting my mood boosted up because it life isn't just uh a bed of nails hot and hot coals. Uh whether I had the Connecticut experience or not. Yeah. Uh life is not just all about muck and guck and, and oh woe is me. It, it's some good stuff about life, and and so we needed to get get me to that level where I go, okay, yeah, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, I'm going through a rough patch right now, but it's gonna be okay. And once they got me there, then, like I said, we start to peel back the band aids and and deal with that. And so, uh, which we were we were making good progress on, uh, and and they started to transition. Okay, what does you getting out of here look like what's your support group like you said yeah. and surely it was uh james and treva and mimi uh at the moment that's who and the thompsons because the thompsons mr thompson flew down and saw me uh who is mimi again mimi was my counselor from missouri state oh, okay yeah and uh thompsons came down and saw me so that was my that was my outside peer group so to speak that i was gonna have yeah and so that's what we start focusing on transitioning to, we're gonna still deal with the, the this stuff. We're gonna we're, we're gonna touch as far as you want to touch as as far as you want to pull back the band aid and on how many band aids you want to pull back. We'll do it, but you, you don't need to be in this city. Yeah. This is a cute city. You don't need to be in. So uh, we did. We uh, we worked together and we got me out of there uh, when we did. Yeah. Well, that's that's great. That's yeah. that's awesome. Do you think when you got out, you had this resurgence for for life, for outlook on life? Or- yeah, yeah, I, I did. Uh, it wasn't strong as I liked it liked it to have been, but it was it was it was ten times stronger than what I came in. Yeah. So, so we were in good good place. But yeah, yeah, I. Uh, and, and and it was so funny. Again, that was by them keeping me leveled off. Uh, yeah, it was. It was man. The sun is shining, shining. It's it's gonna be okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna deal with some stuff. But you know what? At the end of the day, that stuff didn't kill me, and I'm here today. And I can talk about it, and I can even say, okay, yep, that happened. Uh, I don't want revenge. That person did that. That person didn't do this. Didn't do that, but you know what? I can I can safely shelf that. Yeah. 
and it's just it's just on the shelf and i i'm i'm done with dealing with it which before i couldn't do that it just i kept it all packed down like i said in those boxes yeah Well, that's good. That's great. Yep. That's awesome. You were able to come out of it with something. Yeah. Um. What's something you're looking forward to this week? I'm looking forward to the doctors, my oncologist, finding out whether I got a UTI or whether this is something from the colostomy surgery with my urine, uh, urinating and painfulness and bloody clots. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to them finding out what's going on with me so I can have some, get some peace on that. Yeah. Yep. Me uh, as well. And looking forward to going, going Christmas shopping for you guys. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I am looking forward to an improv show I have on Friday. Awesome. Um, from eight to nine at Seattle roast coffee. <laughs> I don't think this episode will be out before then, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm Looking forward to making funny art with my friends. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for this episode of The Roads Less Traveled. We want to thank you guys for listening. Yes. Always, always thank you for listening, tuning in to listen about Greg's story and past and upbringing and everything else. Um, and we just want to say thank you and wish you guys the best and a happy holidays and a merry christmas yes and we love you bye take care god bless <laughs>